Now, I know that you guys have several prototypes of the different robots that you're going to want to use, and obviously not all of them are going to have, you know, full-up tests, right. but with the prototypes that you already have and have, you know, uh, shown off publicly, mm -hmm. are any of those going to be used or any um, particular parts that worked on those prototypes going to be used for the actual one that you're going to be doing the experiment with? No. No. Um, the original robots we had worked with, the ribbon was two inches wide, which makes everything about that robot obsolete because we're using a different kind of thread. Um, and that's okay. We kind of knew that was, was, was coming. Um, you know, those robots in, pr in years past were focused on an earth elevator and that was going to be, you know, uh, the, earth, the eventual earth system was going to be um, about 15 feet wide and paper thin. Well, uh, with the lunar elevator, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy, it's, it's almost like dental floss. What we will actually climb in space is almost like dental floss. I have some in my bag. Can we pause for a second? Sure. So this is some of the sample material we've been working with over the last couple of weeks and months. Um, it's not quite strong enough, but you, it's so slippery. It's so incredibly slippery. This is Vectran. Um, Interesting note, uh, I was talking to the Entry, Descent, and Lander director from JPL a couple weeks ago. Uh, he's the guy who's in charge of the Mars Curiosity landing on the moon, or landing on Mars. And uh, they use Vectran, this, this same material, for the original like uh, Spirit and Curiosity landings. So Vectran actually gets stronger when it gets colder which is one of the main reasons we are interested, because if we're going up seven kilometers high, it gets very, very cold up there, negative 40, negative 50, negative 20 Celsius. Um, can it go as high as negative 70? Uh, it's really crazy. So that added strength is good for us. Um, this material breaks at about 800 to 900 pounds, so we want a little bit more than that our math said we needed to have a minimum of 11 to 1,200 pounds. So we've got a little bit extra, 250 uh, pounds extra. Um, but this is the kind of material, and if you look at the other end, there's something like, in this case, there's something like 1,200 individual, individual strands and threads. It really is pretty mind-boggling stuff uh, when you start thinking about it, like what each one of these things can do. You can break one individually, but there's no way you or me could break this. There's no way. But then when we switch to the lunar elevator, this is, uh, this is Xylon. It's even thinner and it's even stronger. This particular Xylon, um, this breaks at about 90, 90 pounds. So this isn't probably enough. But it is gonna be something like this and when we build the lunar elevator, there are so few stresses on it that we might be able to use something in this range. So when I refer to it as dental floss, I really do think we're talking about something a lot like this. Uh, and again, it, this is harder to see, but there's super, super fine threads in there. Same thing. Um, that this can carry 90 pounds, I mean, that's... Uh, you know, that's, my niece doesn't weigh that. Like, I could pick my niece up with this. So, um, yeah, pretty, pretty amazing stuff. So that's what we're going to use. And so when we talk about the construction for the elevator itself, our robots, they have to climb this or they have to climb this. And that makes a very, that's a completely different kind of construction. You've got a, um, instead of gripping a flat surface like that, um, you've got a, you've got a really, I don't know how to describe it with my fingers, but you've got to really grip this thing in a different kind of way. We're using uh, we're using great big wheels and having the the string slide around the wheels. So no, we can't use any of the old parts. We did learn a lot from those original robots that we're using for this design, but we can't use any of the old parts. We can't. And then the other thing is that. Uh, you know, the miniaturization and the efficiencies in the last six years, uh, we can just go and order parts that we had to create from scratch before. So that's pretty nice. And the parts are stronger, better machined, 
more efficient and cheaper. So we're pretty happy about some of that. Some of that. That's really good. Now, uh, um, uh, obviously, you're going to be doing the, the the testing, you know, here on Earth with a helium balloon. Um, but uh, are you going to be doing any tests, like in a vacuum chamber or anything like that, to see if there's any unforeseen anomalies or anything like that with the strength of the string? Yeah, the string we're not so worried about. We're really worried about the balloons. If you were to ask me, you, we all we are, we kind of have a pool about what's going to go wrong. Everybody has a different different take on it. I think what's going to happen is that the balloon, as it gets higher, it expands, right? Because the gases are expanding. Um, there's less air pressure. But the, 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 the plastic, it's not plastic, but the plastic of the uh, balloon isn't going to expand. And so what I think will happen is it will start out here on the ground and get higher and higher and higher and bigger and bigger and bigger. And what will happen, I think, is that it'll get so cold that the plastic will freeze and crack the balloon. You'll have a, a leak, and then the balloon will just kind of like come back down. So that's what I think is going to happen. Most of us don't think there's many problems with the string. We're all pretty confident in the string. The other problems are uh, lubricants, gripping surfaces, tension surfaces. Um, if there's moisture in the air, and our, our gripping points against the string wind up slipping. Yeah, there's dozens of things that can go wrong. Um, putting it into a vacuum chamber doesn't really help because we're not going so high that that would make much of a difference. Uh, to put in perspective, we're going seven kilometers. That's higher than Mount McKinley. Mount McKinley is the biggest thing in North America, but it's not as high as Mount Everest. So when you climb Everest, you need a gas ma a, a, a gas for oxygen for yourself. So we're not we're not so far that a vacuum chamber makes much of a difference, but we are probably going to put this thing in the freezer. Um, it's an industrial restaurant freezer. It's not negative 70 C. So we'll learn something, but we may not learn everything that we need. Um, and that's just that's just a question of time and resources. So. Um, yeah, and we're, we'll have a, a treadmill, basically. We could learn an awful lot by just taking this whole thing, putting it into a treadmill, and letting it climb for a couple hours or a couple days. We'd learn almost as much as we would climbing on the string on the balloons. So um, yeah, we're, we're doing that kind of stuff.